This is Mitch, and welcome to the 1000houses.com podcast, and I'm talking to Matthew Sullivan today. He's going to show us how to unlock the equity in your home, and this is very, very valuable. There's some great terms for this, uh, some great rates typically, uh, and also it can be used when no other institutions will really, um, I don't know, give you the loan because maybe you don't have time on the job or you had a uh, a blip on your credit or something. We're going to learn more about it. Right now, I need to pay homage to my to my sponsor, TaxFreeFuture.com. If you are interested in a tax deferred or tax free IRA, 401k, uh, college fund, uh, health fund, man, please check out TaxFreeFuture.com. We'll teach you how to roll over your existing account as a tax free event. It will. Uh, be self-directed with checkbook control. And so you'll be able to invest in what you want to, when you want to, just got to abide by the rules and we'll keep you informed of that. Anyways, taxfreefuture.com. Check it out. It is a great tool to have in your tool belt. All right, Matthew, I paid the bills. (laughs) You're over in Salt Lake City, Utah right now. Um, Tell us a little bit about your background so we can know who you are and where you're from, and then we'll get into the business part. Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, Mitch, thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, so I'm originally from the UK. I moved over to Southern California um, about seven years ago, and uh, we've recently uh, moved to Utah. Uh, and it's it's coming from California. It's pretty chilly here, I tell you that. But coming from England, it's like fantastic. We've got seasons. Um and, and so it's uh, you know all a bit of an adventure. So uh, my background is entrepreneurial. Um, I've uh, worked in or well, set up businesses in telecoms, technology, finance. Um, I spent a number of years working with uh, the rather fabulous Richard Branson in his offices in uh, Kensington, in, in near Holland Park in London. Um, and uh, when I moved over here, one of the first things that I set up was uh, a real estate fund and a real estate crowdfunding company. So um, I've really been very much my entire focus over the last seven years, um, gosh, how time flies, um, has been on real estate, real estate platforms, financing platforms. Um, and for the last three years, uh, we've been absolutely focused on Quantum RE, uh, which is the company that I founded um, and uh, I now dedicate almost every waking moment to. Okay. So I want to move on to the business part, but I can't ignore this. You worked with Richard Branson. How is he? Tell, tell us a little, tell us a Richard Branson story. Well, <laughs> not sure. Yes. I think I, I probably have to be careful about the stories because I know that his lawyers uh, are, are, no, but it was a fantastic time. So it was in the late nineties. So it was some time ago, but the reason um, we got to know him was because um I was part of a very small corporate finance firm. Literally, there was half a dozen of us. We were based in Kensington High Street. um, And one of the investments that we made was to buy the majority stake in a hot air balloon company, um, which was owned by this uh, fabulous chap called Per Lindstrand. Um, And my boss, Rory McCarthy, um, was had this idea that, that Richard should fly around the world in a hot air balloon. So he wrote to Richard and said, look, we own Lindstrand balloons. The global circumnavigation is the last great, you know, uncharted expedition. I think you should go and you should be the pilot. So, and there's this letter in Rory's downstairs bathroom that says, dear Rory, why not? Question mark. Yours, Richard. And so that's, that's how we got started. So we, we ended up being the guys that came up with the idea and, Built the balloon, uh, I, you know, it, it made it on the third attempt. It did 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 quite well. Um, didn't quite make it around the world, but from that point, we had a fairly close relationship, and so we w- ended up working with his corporate finance team, and we got involved with projects such as Virgin Jeans, Virgin Cosmetics, V Two Music, uh, Virgin Bride, um, and you know, I was uh, at one point I, f- I was the director and trustee of the Virgin Air Ambulance. So um, I had a, but but Richard himself was a truly inspirational, um, you know, guy. I mean, surrounded by some of the sharpest, smartest minds on the planet and also some of the scariest. Um, But but he was always this 
this ball of enthusiasm and energy um, that, that really did light up the room. So, um, sorry, a very long answer to a very short question. Oh, no, 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 that's very, very interesting because, you know, you don't get a chance to talk to people that really have that kind of relationship or closer relationship with them. So, so you go through these businesses and stuff and, and you get to California. Um, I lived in Orange County, by the way. I lived in Diamond Bar. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went to elementary school there many moons ago. Uh, and then uh, then you move out to Utah and you, you you find this new business. Tell us about the business you're in today. Well, the business it was um, – the business came with me. So I set up Quantumari three years ago. So okay. um, we, we really just – sort of move everything because i mean utah is this um and i i'm actually swore that i wouldn't mention this to anybody because i think it's one of those places where you move here and you think gosh this is actually rather fabulous yeah <laughs> I'm that's not, I'm not I, live there, I live in the same place and i won't say where because i don't want anyone to move there yeah that's you just don't no one no one should move here um you know everyone should stay exactly where you are because i it's, you know i have nothing but bad things to say um but but obviously the 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 truth is the opposite um but when i was running uh, real estate funds and uh, the, one of the early crowdfunding companies, we came across this asset class, which was still in its, I wouldn't say infancy, but it was still a young concept. And this concept was an alternative financing option for homeowners. And the financing option enabled homeowners to unlock equity without borrowing money. Now, here is the current problem. And let me tell you, in terms of scale, to frame it, there's $18.7 trillion of equity in single-family homes in the US. Now, some people have homes that are fully paid, and some people have a little bit of equity because they've just moved in. Over 15 million homes have 50% or more equity. But the big problem is, for all of these people, if you want to access that equity, you have to go back into debt. So if you've paid off your mortgage, if your home is owned free and clear, how do you get your hands? You might be a millionaire on paper, but you find yourself, you know, you, you can't afford to put gasoline in the car. So if you want to unlock your equity, you have to go back and you take out a some sort of refinance or a mortgage or a reverse mortgage or a line of credit. The product that that we stumbled across three years ago enabled homeowners to get a cash lump sum, but without having to go into debt. And the way that that works is because we have investors who want to take a share of the appreciation of the home rather than being paid interest um, on, on a loan. And over the last three years, we've seen significant growth in this sector. There are now five companies, including ourselves, in this space. Um, and pre-COVID, we were estimating that almost a billion dollars a year uh, would, would go into these types of instruments uh, during 2020. Um, so we saw something that was just at that sort of tipping point, And it's something that I've been absolutely... Uh, I wouldn't say obsessed with, but uh, obsessed in a very good way because I think it is such a an opportunity. It, it's such a great solution for homeowners um, because you don't have monthly payments. You don't have this the spectre of the bank, that, you know, being able to foreclose if you miss a payment. Um, and for people that just don't want to go into debt or people that cannot borrow money, you know, it's an ideal solution. So my home is free and clear. Uh, Sell me on the idea of what do I got to do? What's it look like? Uh, well, I think, um, I mean, I know what to do with the money. What do I expect to pay an interest in? And what they do is they just file a lien as an additional owner for, they do an appraisal right now to figure out what it's worth. And then they get a percentage of the upside as it increases in value. How does it, how does it? It's, it's, it's very, it's, it's parts of that. So, um, first of all, there's a, there's a number of states that this operates in. Um, so it's not, all across the US, it's it's 31 states at the moment, <clears throat> but that but that is you know will increase over time. There are some states where this doesn't work because there are local regulations that make it very difficult. But ultimately, the instrument is an option agreement, and what we say to the homeowner is, in exchange for a, a lump sum, you give us the option to share 
in some of the increase in value when you sell your property, which can be up to 30 years from today. We don't go on title, so there's no change of ownership. There's no monthly payments. There's no interest. It is a straightforward transaction that is entirely dependent on the value of your home. So you're right about the appraisal. When we start the uh, ball rolling, we need to agree the value of your home. So we send an appraiser out, and that appraiser is instructed independently. So we don't have any control over that. And we then we then figure out and we agree on what the value of your home is. And we then agree that we can invest up to a certain percentage, which is around 20%. So the maximum investment that we will make is 20% of the current value of your home. And if you add that investment to your current mortgage, that must be less than 70% of the value of your home. Now, we talk about that as a combined lean to value. So for those of you that have mortgages, if you look at, um, if if you want to find out how much we could invest, it's whatever the difference is between 70% and and your existing mortgage, as long as that number is not more than 20% of the value of your home. So those are the sort of goalposts, as it were. That's good enough, easy enough. Um, This probably would work very well for a person who knows how to take that money and buy something for half price and sell it for whole price. Well, and again, that's a great example of using home wealth that is trapped in equity to deliver returns, you know, without that burden of knowing that you've got to meet those monthly payments. So it might take you months to do that transaction. And in that period of time, you don't have that uh, overhang or that, that, that issue of having to find the monthly payments for the bank to support those payments. Um, but also, as, as many people, many people don't realize this, but the more you pay off your mortgage, the less of a performing asset your equity becomes. And the reason for that is if you pay off your mortgage, you lose that leverage. So your home, if it's fully paid off, is only going to increase in value in most cases in line with the house price index. Now, you might be in a place where you get a little bit more because your house is um, you know, in a better, better location. But, um, and the average house price index is, let's say, 3 to 4% a year, something like that. So if you can take some of that capital, put it to work in a situation that you just described, and make a much better return, then you're really making your wealth work for you. Yeah. Um, believe me, I know a lot of people who are sleeping in million, $2 million beds. And it's not, you know, the appreciation is maybe like in Texas. It's not like in California and Florida and some places. Of course, we don't have any real real estate crashes either, but we don't have any super high appreciation moments. We just kind of move along at 6 and 7 and 8% a year. You know what I yep. mean? Uh, steady and stays pretty true. But, um, you know, I've asked myself quite a few times, like, I'm sleeping in a very expensive bed right now. Oh, I got all this money locked up. I don't want to sell my house because I've been there 37 years. You know? Exactly. And the biggest issue is as well, um, you don't want to go into debt because you don't want to feel that you have that liability to make those payments. And if something should go wrong where you can't make the payment, the home that you've lived in for 37 years is now at risk. Um, and that's that's something that you absolutely avoid with um, a home equity agreement. So um, you have a book on this, right? Or you've written a book on this? Yes. So on our website, we have uh, it's the biggest challenge is education. In other words, because I can talk to you about a home equity agreement and the fact that it, it goes nowhere near debt. It occupies a completely different universe, which is all about the future value of your home. But most people then immediately think in terms of interest rates and payments and banks and liens. And so the book that we wrote is really just a guide to try and explain why this is so different. And again, remember, there's 18 and a half trillion dollars worth of equity. So this is not a tiny marketplace. This is a solution that could have just as big an impact as 
the securitization of mortgages, for example, because um, you know when when mortgages started, they were again few and far between. Now it's a enormous industry, and I think that the equity side could be the same. So the book that we've got helps people understand how this is different and why this is such a a, a strong alternative to taking out another loan. Yes, I, I, I'm with you 100. percent I mean, it sounds like a no brainer, really. Uh, I mean. Even if you go and blow the money on beer and drink it all and then pee it all out, you're still going to live in your house till, till whenever. You know what I mean? So- there's, there's a great quotation from George Best, who was a famous um, footballer. Um, and uh, he had a bit of a drinking problem. And he was interviewed on his uh, in, in hospital once, I think. And someone said, Mr. Best, George, you've, you've had millions and millions of pounds of money that you've earned over the years what did you do with it and he said i spent it in i spent it on wine women and song and i wasted the rest so, <laughs> so that, that you're you, you're absolutely right it's your money so you can do whatever you want with it um and all you're doing is you're taking money that you've already created in your equity you're not borrowing this from someone else if you decide to spend it on a uh, you know, a bright red Ferrari, that's entirely up to you. If you decide to spend it on paying off your credit cards, getting yourself out of that forbearance trap um, or investing in another business. And, and what it is, it's your capital. That's the most important thing to get across. There are no requirements that come with this agreement that you have to spend it a certain way. Yeah, I imagine the property is more important than you ever were in this scenario. So. Well, that's exactly that's um, and that's absolutely right. We do look at the homeowner and there are requirements. The credit score, for example, needs to be 550 and above because we need to get some indication that there is unlikely to be a problem with the property in the future. So if someone has a very bad credit score, that indicates they may they may be likely to default on the mortgage, for example. So you might even speak to how they're going to. Um, take care of that property. You know, it might speak to a lot of things. So I get yeah, it. exactly. So, but but five fifty is pretty low because, um, but it also that's low enough to be able to help a large number of people that would just be completely turned down by the banks. Okay, so this is the entrepreneur me. Where do you find the money for people to do this? Because this is pretty open ended. Can we? Do you mind talking about that at all? Or where? where are no, no, no. And, and again, this is why it's so interesting because it starts off um, being an asset class that doesn't fit in the box for most investors. Um, and the capital at the moment comes from institutions, pension funds, endowment funds, multifamily offices that have an allocation that needs to go to asset backed investments that have a return that is has low volatility, that has a low drawdown, that will outperform the inflation rate. Now, the return that we get on these investments is better um, for an investor than they would get if they invested you know, directly in the equity itself, because the instruments are designed to have a, a magnifying effect for the, uh, for the investor. Well, so at the moment- too, It's leverage too. I mean, they're buying 20% of a property or whatever, of a million dollar property and you know it's appreciating it's a, it's a form of leverage right or am i do i have that wrong you know, you're absolutely right but the way that the the now this comes back to the amount that you pay as a homeowner so if you let's say let's say you have a million dollar home and you um unlock a hundred thousand dollars that's ten percent of the value of your home when you sell your home again which can be any time in the next 30 years you would pay back the hundred thousand dollar initial investment and the investors would take not a 10% share of the increase in value. They would take a multiple or a magnified amount, typically between 25 and 30% of the, of, the appreciation. of the appreciation. So they don't get 10% of the appreciation. They get more. Now, that's yeah. fine with the homeowner because the homeowner is saying, well, okay, I still get 70% of the appreciation. That's and my- 100% of the occupancy. Hundred percent of the hundred percent of use of the funds. The no fund, there's no payments. The funds are tax deferred, so there's no. Even if you have a potential capital gains tax liability, should you sell the home by unlocking this equity, that tax um, uh, obligation is deferred until you actually sell the home. So you have hundred cent dollars, you know, to put to work. 
Yeah, but this is a great plan to defer, 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 die. And then don't worry about the taxes. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is the last bit is the issue with that. So I, I, I like I like it so far. Yes. We're going to die anyway, so we might as well just postpone I've, that. I've heard that rumor. Exactly. Yes. Um, but no, but that's absolutely right. So the investors at the moment um, um, are all institutions of, of various different types because they don't necessarily need cash flow because they have other investments in other allocations that provide the cash flow. This is an asset-backed equity investment, um, and this provides the foundation for you know a number of their um, you know investment strategies. But going forwards, we have other funds that we work with that are a blend of private mortgages and home equity investments because that's a, um, a almost a replica of the capital stack of a residential home. So we're seeing more and more interest from smaller investor groups who want to be able to buy into homes that are not for sale. And that's a critical thing. To be able to buy into the equity in homes in California without having the issue of owning that property. So, so we could buy into the equity of houses in Newport Beach, sharing that appreciation, but the homeowner is the one who pays the mortgage, pays the taxes, fixes the roof, maintains the property. And we benefit from that increase in value. The homeowner benefits as well because they get cash without monthly payments and with no additional debt. That's incredible. What out-of-the-box thinking, man. I just love it. That's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this podcast is I meet some incredible people with some incredible ideas. And I don't know how I would ever stumble into you or this concept if it weren't for this podcast that I'm doing, you know? So people ask me why I do this podcast if I don't have to work anymore. I really don't have to work anymore, but I'm going to be 60 years old in February, you know, in a few months. And I mean, I still got a lot I want to do and there's still things to learn and I'm still invigorated exactly. about the whole thing. And so what am I going to do? So uh, I just, keep marching forward. I mean, I people go, well, how much do you want to make or how much do you want to be worth? I said, just more than last year. That's all. I don't yes. care the dollar. But my goal is to improve every year, you know, as much right. as I can. My not only just my finances, but my health or my or my my knowledge or my brain or I mean, you know, I just want to keep going forward until inevitably we we diminish. But you know, uh, and I and I so appreciate having people like you on because the world doesn't know about this. My, you know, selling your houses on 30-year mortgages, which is what I do. You know, I, I, I buy houses for 50 grand and owner finance them for 100 grand with 10% down. And I, and I, I, uh, so I wonder if I could go through all my houses. I have 300 houses I collect the mortgages on, you know? I mean, I mean, can I sell you a piece of that? No, you don't get the appreciation, so it won't work. <laughs> I don't own the house. I just, I just poke the hole in my own plan. But anyways, you know, no one's, not a lot of people know that strategy to do that, but more than know about your strategy, I think, because I never heard of this. In yes. And, and it is. And, and thankfully, um, you'll be pleased to hear that we didn't invent it. So it, it was created 10 years ago by this very clever group called Equity Key based in San Diego. And over the last 10 years, it has evolved as a product. It's developed. Um, it's gone through changes. Um, it's gone through hey, well, probably uh, yeah and and also it's been challenged um yeah. you know is this alone is this not alone um but today as i said there are you know four other companies all of whom are funded by significant uh you know silicon valley institutional capital so you know it's a serious alternative to debt um and as i mentioned at the beginning the biggest challenge for us is education but funnily enough Almost every conversation where, which we have with a homeowner starts with, what is it? Why would I ever do this? Inevitably, it ends with, why would I not do it? Why would I not do it? Um, and the only answer, the reason you wouldn't do it is if you don't want to share in the potential future appreciation. I mean, that's some people are very um, precious about this concept of equity. Um, and for those people, they just want to hang on to this concept of potential future wealth other people that understand that it's not wealth unless you can get your hands on it and do something with it those are the people that um are you know taking this smarter alternative yeah so um when 
Well, what kind of volume are you doing in this? I mean, is it is it is it? Are you reaching a lot of people these days? Or are you just building up? Well, we started. Uh, um, marketing directly to, to consumers about a year ago. Um, business is growing on a month-by-month -month basis. The, if you, uh, it's difficult to get specific statistics, but um, you know, the industry itself is doing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of investments in home equity agreements per annum with a very steep anticipated growth curve. So in other words, this is something that is now, and, and COVID, um, you know, rightly or wrongly, has created a very good environment for this type of instrument because more people need money more than ever. And the banks are making it more difficult to borrow money. So there's that sort of chasm that's developing between the, the, the you know, banking finance and, uh, as you said at the beginning, people that don't qualify for whatever reason. Wealth comes from chaos. Well, Yes. And again, this is, uh, and what I like about this product is we're not cashing in. Um, it's not a predatory product. It is truly helping people. There's a price to pay for it, but that price is very clearly articulated. It's not, you know, it's it's not a, an overly high price, um, but it helps people unlock potentially life changing amounts of capital um, because you know COVID has put millions of people into a very difficult situation, and this could amongst many other things, be a, a solution for them. Or a bridge, yeah, some kind of bridge. I mean, you always think, I guess, that, is there ever a way to pay it off? Yeah, you can pay. There's no prepayment penalty in most cases, um, depending on the product provider. But these deals can be bought out at any point um, by simply calculating the value of the home by way of an appraisal. Now, there are caveats in most of the agreements that say if the value of the home has gone down and we will be suffering a loss, because remember, our investment is based on the appreciation of the home. If the home collapses in value, you can't game the system and buy us out at that point. Yeah. You can sell the house. Nothing's going to stop you selling the house because if you sell the house, you're going to lose as well. So that's fair enough. But what you can't do is is yeah. use an opportunity to buy us out, you know, and so there are sensible caveats, but there's no restrictions. Um, and in fact, you know, we want these deals to, the average duration uh, is around five years uh, for these types, which is really um, following the same level of uh, uh, sort of home ownership. The average home ownership is around seven years. So what we're seeing is the average duration of these agreements is around five years. So that's, I forgot about that caveat. I was thinking you're going 30 years, but I should know I'm in the mortgage business. I carry mortgages all the time. I wish they last 30 years. They never do. Yeah, I don't know anyone that's taken out a 30-year mortgage that's run it, the same mortgage for 30 years. Well, that's interesting. So uh, you, you are you giving away this book? Is that what my understanding is? Uh, yeah, the book. Yeah, no, the book is absolutely free. I mean, the the, the exchange is um, obviously just, you know, your name and your email address will then send you a link. Um, and... Um, yeah. So, so I want everyone to go to 1000houses.com forward slash home equity exclamation point. Okay. Home equity exclamation point. And that'll get you over to the show notes. And over there, there'll be all the contact information, the website information. You can get your copy of the free book, whatever else uh, Matthew decides that needs to be over there that could help you phone numbers, addresses, whatever. And you'll be able to, to follow. If, if you're interested in this concept, you'll be able to follow it all the way to the end of the road. So just go to 1000houses.com. That's 1000houses.com forward slash home equity exclamation point. And that'll get you over there. And, uh, you know, it's a very interesting concept. Do you ever make it to San Antonio, Texas? I'd love to. I think at the moment, uh, I, um, I'm not traveling that much, but I don't think many people are. Um, but yes, it would be, uh, um, yeah, I'd be, I, delighted to uh, we were talking earlier about your your, your ranch so uh, you know to, to see a real texas ranch i think that would be a, a real delight well uh mine's mine's just a ranchette at 600 acres but you know uh, it's like a training ranch or something it's like a training ranch yeah it's got, I mean, that's know. what you need i mean if it takes you a week to walk around your friends the offenses that's you know that's that's enough for me uh so hang on after we're done because i'd like to get your personal contact information and i'll, I'll give you an invite that's so brilliant. that's great thanks Mitch. I would like to thank everybody for chiming in. If this has been interested, 
interesting to you, and it's got to be interesting to some entrepreneurs out there I know that are sleeping in some beds that are worth a fortune. And this may make perfect sense, especially to those of you, A, if you're in a little bit of trouble, or B, if you really know how to work with, with money and, and make it make it grow, then uh, it may be what you're looking for. Go to 1000houses.com forward slash home equity exclamation point. And um, I'd like to thank taxfreefuture.com for sponsoring this. Uh, you know, if you don't have a tax deferred or, or, or tax free investment vehicle in which to grow your funds, this is a great one. Check it out. We'll teach you how to roll over your stuff. Self-direct means, which means you decide where things are invested and how you want to invest it. You can loan money. You can invest in different things. Uh, as long as we stay within a certain amount of rules, but you know, everything's subject to negotiation, I believe. And um, also it has um, checkbook control. So you're able to strike fast, which is the point of the thing because good deals don't hang around. We like to say in our business, you can't steal houses in slow motion. Hmm. So um, this is Mitch with 1000 Houses Podcast, and we'll be talking to you later. Thanks for, for joining us today, Matthew Sullivan. Uh, we appreciate you very much. And uh, what a mind-blowing conversation today. I mean, I, oh, I got to ask you one last thing. Texas, do you do it in Texas? Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that, actually. The, yeah. Texas is one of those few states where because of the homestead regulations it makes yes. it really I, was gonna, I already knew i pretty yeah. much figured it out yeah so that's uh it, that is, but again you know we are working on that trying to find ways around it but um but yeah, yeah. um hard to take any, hard any to, of the other ones <laughs> it's hard to work in texas but maybe it'll save you some wasted phone calls if i mentioned it because right now but we're going to stay tuned actually if you get texas write me down and call me back and we'll redo some stuff okay course definitely thank you for having me on it's been an absolute pleasure as well all right this is mitch steven with 1000 houses podcast thank you so much we're out of here